Welcome back to The Breakfast. Eight members of the Redeemed Christian Church of God were kidnapped on Friday, adding to the increasing incidents of abductions in northern Nigeria. They were kidnapped the same day. Of course, we had here on The Breakfast a father uh, pleading with the Kaduna State Government to negotiate with the abductors of his two daughters. Abductions in the north are many, uh, well, in, in these days, you know, continue to happen and many go unreported. Sympathizers like Shea Gumi is asking for amnesty for the kidnappers, while other people and groups want the government to use force. On the show this morning is a former presidential candidate who is from Borno State, Galtima Liman. Thank you very much for joining us and for your time this morning. Thank you very much, sir. All right. Um, you know, there is, of course, you know, two sides of this. There's people who say we can negotiate, we can pay ransoms, we can plead, we can maybe even grant amnesty. Um, there's different reasons why they have those, uh, you know, those uh, demands or why they have that, that uh, perspective. There's also those who stay on the side who say we will continue to use force. We have the security agencies that are capable of reading Nigeria of all these elements. What side are you on? Well, it depends on the situation on ground. If you have uh, people that are already being kidnapped that are in the, on the, uh, in the custody of these uh, bandits, then uh, one has to be very, very delicate about how he goes about it because the life of the innocent people will be involved. But I'm not for this issue about uh, amnesty or uh, you know, supporting criminality. Once we've been able to get the, uh, the, the, the victims out, no matter you know, what kind of unpalatable situation you put yourself in as a government, then the government needs to put very strong intelligence, uh, credible intelligence on ground. Who are funding these people? Why are they getting the, the funds? And at the same time, what is motivating people to go into uh, kidnapping and banditry? These are absolutely very important issues to, uh, to be addressed. So you, you are a former presidential candidate, so I'm sure that, you know, if you had won, this, you know, maybe would have been, you know, questions that you would have had to ask yourself and your government. You would have been held responsible for um, ensuring that Nigeria is safe. So if you were in that position, what would you have done and what, what steps would you have taken uh, to help the country completely get rid of all these elements? You see, there are, there are various dimensions to the security challenges facing this country. Recall that there is this uh, issue of Bakasi ruling and uh, the kind of uh, proxy wars that are going on, one would like to ask himself, uh, is, is it related to implementation of the, you know, seeding of some parts of this country? Nobody is asking these questions. You know, that's uh, in the northeast side. And as a consequence of the internally displaced people, and as a consequence of the fact that people are not going to farm, uh, cattle rustling and all this, it has led into criminality. So the root cause must be investigated. That is the, uh, that's my concern there. Okay. Mr. Liman, it seems we have a, a, a basically what is called a brickmanship at the moment, or a stalemate, so to speak. Because we're having the government side say they would never pay ransom uh, you know, for the release of kidnapped victims and they would never grant amnesty to bandits. But still, the you know, stout spokesman of the, you know, the bandits, Ashik Ahmed Gumi, has come out to say that these bandits will not drop their arms unless they are guaranteed of their safety. Where do we then go from here? You know, criminals cannot... Uh Keep a country under, uh, uh, you know, uh, you know, a, a country cannot be held under stranglehold of criminals. That's why a lot of uh, funds have been uh, budgeted for security purposes. The question is, where are these big, huge funds, security huge funds, going into? We've had cases where, like in the the Suki Gate case, where over four point something billion dollars has not gone into procurement of arms. So these are some of the problems that we are facing. You know, uh, the priority number one responsibility of government is providing security. So if uh, the funds are not going into the right uh, areas in terms of uh, getting the appropriate intelligence training of detectives and ensuring that those that have uh, committed uh, hideous crime 
the long arm of the law uh, gets into them and makes it very, very unpalatable for you to, uh, you know, to, to enjoy the process of crime. Then, the, then at the same time, positively, you now see that the youth are engaged. You, you could recall that the, uh, the director general of the World Trade Organization, uh, the famous uh, Ngozi Okojola, was saying that Nigerian government needs to create about 5 million jobs per annum for the next uh, 5 to 10 years for the, the country to come out of all these uh, difficulties. So it's very important that we address these issues. Would you say that we have dealt with this situation with kid gloves for so long and we currently at a stage where we have no other choice than to negotiate and to, you know... I'm not talking about negotiation. That is not even my priority. My priority, first of all, is that if these guys are in, uh, they, uh, they, uh, they're able to kidnap people, well, there's nothing you can do. You have to, to secure the uh, life of the innocent people. Well, but I, I'm not referring to... Is not the major issue. Yeah. I'm not referring to negotiations just for, you know, those who are currently in, in um, um, uh, captivity. I'm saying, do you think that we've dealt with the whole situation with regards to security, from Boko Haram to the bandits to the headers and farmers um, clashes and the kidnappers, all of them? Do you think that we've dealt with it with kid gloves for too long? And at the stage that we are currently, we can no longer strictly just use force in order to solve this problem. You see, uh, like the European Union delegation one time said, each of these security situations requires different templates for you to handle. The Boko Haram issue is different from the cattle rustling issue. It's diff different from the pastoral, uh, uh, the uh, agricultural uh, crisis that you have. It's also different from all this uh, artisan mining criminality that is taking place in places like Zamfara and all that kind of a thing, where the government is forced to uh, introduce no-fly zone and things like that. So each of these areas requires credible intelligence. You know, what is going on? Uh, the North East, you have about 3 million people displaced. You know, and uh, the, uh, some of these communities, you cannot access them. And who is providing armored uh, plated uh, vehicles, satellite uh, monitors, helicopter gunships, and things like that? So, and when, 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 when funds are provided for, 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 for security, uh, addressing security, these issues, these funds uh, uh, are, not, are not expended as they should be expended. So these are very, very complex issues. Hmm. Mr. Lehman, during the course of our conversation, you've mentioned intelligence at least four times. And really, it's, it's very important, you know, in, in winning the battle against insecurity in Nigeria. So I, I would like to ask you, in this regard, do you think that our security agencies need to reevaluate the intelligence gathering methods as a means to fight the war against terrorism in Nigeria? You see, for long, the security architecture in Nigeria had been that of conventional warfare training. And so, uh, like uh, the Bush doctrine during George Bush uh, post uh, September 11, he came back and said, look, we don't need to have what they call rapid response because by the time we respond, it's too late. We need to have proactive you know, preemptive uh, 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 steps to, to address these issues. And for you to have preemptive approach, you need to have credible intelligence. You need to also know the root cause of why these issues are happening. You know, why should uh, a small ragtag, uh, you know, uh, fanatic group called Yusufia suddenly transmute itself into a very sophisticated machinery? Who are the ones behind these ghost wars? It's important for the government to, to, to identify this and then take steps. You know, who are the powers that are behind this? Who are funding them? Absolutely. Yeah. More. And why are they doing that? So, so these, these, are, for the, for the, for, yeah. these, these are very important questions. And we've asked these same questions here on, on this platform. We've, we've spoken about mm -hmm. sponsors. We've spoken about the source of their weapons. We've spoken about, exactly. you know, how, how they, you know, have continued to thrive over the years. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, the answers to these questions is what, are what we continue to seek. Would you say that the current administration has failed with regards um, protecting Nigerians and, and you know, their promises with regards to security um, in the country? Would you say that they have completely failed? Or would no, you they say that... Failed. The, 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 if they have completely failed, you know, we, we will not even have this interview going on. You know, the only thing is that it's been... It's, it's overwhelming them. And it's important that they know why it's overwhelming them. Uh, you know, uh, most of these uh, international delegations that come, you said, look, some of the issues require political solution. And as, as I said, 
uh, some of the addendums of the Bakasi ruling is that about 13, 33 fishing and farming communities around the Lechard areas have been seeded. So uh, is it that those areas, those guys are trying to implement another country in that area? It's very important for us to find out that. You know, where the delineation, where the area that has been seeded and what, what part of Nigeria is Nigeria now, so that it's absolutely important we know. You know, if it's this that is causing the huge problems, so we'll be able to politically solve that. Mr. Mr. Lemon, we're talking amnesty of force, but you're suggesting political solutions. What sorts of political solutions um, would you be referring to? I'm not talking about legislation. I'm talking about a ruling. That was a ruling that uh, seeded some parts of this country, Bakasi, up to some 33 fishing and farming communities. And here is where you have these huge guns and bombs that are taking place. So is it part of the implementation of that, uh, 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 the, the Bakasi ruling, the, the 2002 ruling, International Court of Justice ruling? It's important we find out, you know. So and sometimes implementation of this requires ghost wars. You know, proxy army. If it's proxy army, it's nothing that Iran can do about it, but, you know, sitting down with whoever is the interest behind it and solve this pro politically so that we don't have these uh, cr criminals with the huge guns entering the country and holding the country to ransom. Yeah, you know, but it's still the government's responsibility to take action here, you know, and you know, in every single, you know, direction that you've mentioned. And that's why I was asking if you think that they've, you know, failed or not. You know, you've said that they are overwhelmed. So do you think that it's still a war that can be won by the current administration? Exactly. Why, why not? If the right buttons are pressed, if the real reasons are known, and we are not pretending that those real reasons are known, then the solution can be found. You know, most of the big, huge conflicts, the, even, 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 even the, 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 the crisis between America and the Taliban, eventually the Americans came to realize that, look, some of these issues needed to be discussed the, on a conference table. And of recent, during even Trump's period, you found out that the crisis had reduced tremendously as a consequence of that. It's not that they were, uh, they were, they, 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 they were overwhelmed with the Trump administration, but this is an irritation. So, so do you trust that these right steps will be taken and the right buttons will be you know, pushed? Well, it is the responsibility of the government to do that. Because one of the major responsibilities is to find the right people knowledgeable people that are committed to the national development, not people that are committed to their pockets. We, we, you know, I cannot understand how funds that are meant for saving lives and properties of the innocent Nigerians, it's being used for, for conspicuous consumption. It's criminal. Yes. Uh, um, Galti Maliman, th this is where I'm trying to get you. Yes. Um, we've had six years, you know, maybe a little above five years of um, the current administration. We, of course, uh, you know, have until 2023 to, you know, rate them with regards to their level of success in, in uh, you know, defeating the insecurity challenges that we've been having. And at the end of 2023, Nigeria will either be a safer place to live or we will continue to deal with these issues and maybe it would get worse. Nobody knows. Do you trust, and I'm, I'm talking now with, re, you know, your views on how the last five, six years have been handled, do you trust that between now and 2023, we might be in a better place? Because you, you, from what you've said, you, there's a lot of solutions that need to come into play here. You've talked about Bakasi. You talked about arm, yeah. arms uh, proliferation across the country. You're talking about corruption yeah. also. Billions of naira has been spent on, um, exactly. on um, arm, arms and ammunition and, of course, with regard to security. But there's no evidence of, you know, a, a, of, of a better place to live in. So do you trust that by 2023, we might be safer? Well, it depends on the rethink of leadership. If the uh, current situation continues, it will be very uncomfortable, even for the leadership, for the government itself. So it is in their enlightened best interest to sit up, look at this issue, and begin to address them seriously. Let, it be, uh, let a clear message be sent to all the bandits that this uh, cannot be business as usual. You know, and so yeah, those that are already under the, their custody steps have to be taken to release them, and then it will be made extremely very, very unpalatable for anybody to kidnap and begin to make money and trace the money, see uh, where it's uh, expended. Look, was it in Anambra or Imo State? You go about building three or four bedroom uh, you know, flats somewhere, they go and demolish it. So these are the kind of things that you need to, to show that criminality is not accepted. Still talking about the issue of, you know, amnesty, 
for bandits, right? We saw the governors of Niger and Zamfara states, you know, tell the president that he should consider amnesty the way, you know, the former uh, president, Omar Musa Yadua, granted amnesty there, to... There are two to the... different things all Exactly. I was going to they, ask that. They, they, Is there they... any basis for comparison between no, 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 both? No, 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 and no, 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 no. There are two different things all day. All day. The United Delta, you had the case of deprivation as a consequence of uh, resource control. You had the foreigners, uh, you know, exploiting the resource and the uh, local people have not been getting the benefit. So that's a different thing altogether. I could remember during our presidential campaign, I had an opportunity to, to, uh, to discuss with the chief economic advisor of Yaradua. And uh, part of my recommendation then was to, uh, for amnesty, amnesty for the Niger Delta people. That's a different thing altogether. But this is a criminal case. So basically, you know. we, should, we, should, uh, we should basically assess each challenge on its own merit and find solutions rather than just copy and paste. Differently, yes, yes. So, you know. talking about amnesty in general terms now, would that be the only price for peace in Nigeria? It cannot be. It's not about amnesty all around. It depends on different situations. Like, as I told you, the Northeast issue, together with all those uh, crises in the uh, highly uh, resourced uh, Lechard uh, area, you remember, you recall that the oil has been discovered in the Lechard region. So that has probably brought a lot of interesting players in the oil, oil, oil game there. So is it part of the implementation? Government needs to know. And government needs to know who and who are providing what. And if it is something that is beyond their power, it's, uh, since legally they have lost control of some of these areas, they should accept it and see how they can move forward. So these are some of the areas that I said different from uh, when it comes to the uh, pastoralist and uh, the, uh, the, uh, the indigenous community that is farmers, it's a different ball game all there. You have uh, uh, the, the herders for a number of years used a particular route, and now you're saying that you cannot pass those way, and so it creates a vector of flush. So these are areas that each one of them requires intelligence and the very, very sophisticated thinking with right. a genuine commitment to address the issue, not going there with a commitment for pockets. Well, the stomach is infrastructure they're talking about. Do you think that um, Sheikh Gumi and you know a few of the northern governors who have uh, suggested amnesty, do you think that they might understand it a different way from the way you see things? You know, is it possible Sheikh that Gumi, they've... Sheikh Gumi, Sheikh Gumi is one of the people that was able to get intelligence gathering. That's, that's, that's a different thing altogether. You know, you get the intelligence. This is what is happening. I've been able to go to the den of the bandits. This, they are, they are not, uh, they don't even know Islam. They don't know this. So that's a different. It's, it's supposed to be an input for the government, for the intelligence, for the think tank, to see what to do. It's not for him to make recommendations that this is how we can just do amnesty. He went there on his own uh, private uh, volition to find out what is happening. So part of, part of the information you got is uh, uh, supposed to serve as an input for further policy implementation. It's not uh, for him to recommend that or amnesty that we should give amnesty to them. Oh, well, um, I'm going to go further with your assessment of the current administration. The president um, a few weeks ago had said that there would be no amnesty and that you know the Nigerian army and security agencies are very much capable of defeating That's these what I'll say, um, yeah. uh, security, insecurity uh, challenges that we're dealing with. Um, and also, you know, you, you've continued to state different angles, you know, through which we can sort out these issues. Um, yeah. I'm sure, or I'm not sure, you know, but there should be people in government that know these things that you've mentioned, know about, you know, how we must stop um, arms uh, proliferation across the country, know how mm -hmm. we must probe uh, the, the economic aspects of this, you know, how, where the, the funding for the banditry is coming from where the funding for terrorism is coming from, and, you know, ask these questions. But we've had so much time. Not long ago, there was a report of Nigerians arrested in the UAE for funding terrorism. But the Nigerian government itself has not been able to name one person or point any fingers as to people who have, you know, supported the terrorism that has uh, taken, you know, parts of Nigeria. So, once again, what, how would you react to where they've been seemingly inadequate in addressing these issues? That is what I'm saying. The issues are complex, and it requires people with the knowledge of geopolitics in some of the cases, particularly with the respect to this issue, because this Bakasi issue and the 33 fishing farming committees with 3.2 something million internally displaced Nigerians was close to about 
30,000 to 40,000 people killed is something that is serious for the government to take serious issues. Uh, you have a complete re resolution expert in this country, uh, worldwide, you, you, can, you can procure to see how we can deal with that issue amicably. You know, I, I believe it's a strong ghost war that is going on there, a proxy war going on there. So if you now use conventional Nigerian military to deal with the proxy war, at the end of the day, it's the kind of failure that you're going to see. So right. it's a very sophisticated issue going on there. Who are the ones pressing the buttons of what is going on? In European, I mean, uh, the, uh, what do you call it, uh, the EAU that you're there. You know, so these are some of the issues that the government has to address. All right. Thank so you very expertise. much. It requires people that are committed to deal with this issue. Mm. Okay. Um, you've, um, you know, spoken, I mean, your views, and of course, um, from what you've said, the government is overwhelmed, um, you know, and you've also shared with us your views on, you know, different angles and different pathways through which we could solve mm. these issues. Um, we'll say thank you for joining us uh, this morning, and thank we hope again. to speak with you again. It's a pleasure. Absolutely. Yes, that was a former presidential candidate, Scott Malim, in there, yes. uh, helping us, you know, break down this issue of amnesty or war against terrorism. Yeah, I've never heard the Bakasi perspective, you know, so pronounced. Yeah, um, I also um, want to imagine that there is, you know, it's not just in the Bakasi, you know, peninsula or Bakasi area. There's also other routes through which weapons have continued to flow in freely in, you mm -hmm. know, in Nigeria. Um, we've, this is maybe the thousand time that we've had a conversation and, you know, people have shared great ideas on how we can tackle the, the, you know, the insecurity challenges that we're dealing with. You know, the question really is, is anybody in government, is anybody in positions of power today whose responsibility it is to ensure that Nigeria is safe, um, um, you know, as soon as possible? Is any of these persons listening, do they know these things and have chosen to, you know, to not act. It still boils down um, to the political who will is funding, problem. Uh, yes, who is funding terrorism in Nigeria? Those weapons are not made here in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. So somebody definitely is buying them um, and sending them, you know, to the country. Who is turning a blind eye to when these weapons are gotten into, into Nigeria? Where is the auditing for the amount of money that has gone into fighting insecurity in the last couple of years? Who is going to be asking those questions? We're asking those questions. Now it's left for the government, like he said, to listen and take action. I guess that's where uh, we call it a day here on The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Thank you very much for being a part of our day. Uh, today, a beautiful Monday, uh, last Monday in the month of March. Yes, uh, next, next, The next Monday would be April. So happy new month in advance. I told you first. <laughs> Stay with us. If you missed out on any of this uh, discussions or you want to, of course, uh, you catch up, um, join us on social media. It's at Plus TV Africa, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Same thing with our YouTube channel, which is at Plus TV Africa. I am Osao Gye Ogboa, wishing you a great weekend. Yes, and I am Anessa Felix. I'll see you in about seven minutes for the news at nine.